Welcome back, everybody. My first guest tonight is a Grammy-nominated artist and actress you know from Hidden Figures and Moonlight. Her latest film is Antebellum. We must choose a moment wisely. But until then, we keep our heads down and our mouths shut. Do you understand? I know you, and I know that you are my only way out of here. Please welcome Janelle Monet. Janelle, thank you so much for being here. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? You are my favorite, thank you for having me. Well, I'm, I'm grateful you're here, and we just gotta get you on more often, Janelle Monet, because I, ha I hold in my hand, I'll show it to you, but I'll show it to the camera right over here. This is a photo of uh, the two of us dancing on my desk, but that's been almost ah, two years. Yes. Oh my goodness. Come on. We we should be slapped for not <laughs> seeing each other sooner. That was so fun, and we danced when our like favorite president Barack Obama was in the White House. That's we true. We always dance together. We we're we're long overdue. Well, it's guests like you that make me miss being in the Ed Sullivan Theater right now because I know. I know the audience would be excited to see you and hear you perform. You're a natural performer. You know how to relate to an audience. How are you dealing with not being able to be with the audience right now? I definitely cried when I, when a lot of my tour dates got canceled. I was supposed to be on tour right now, like yeah. headlining the Hollywood Bowl. Um, but I, I'm still connected. You know, I'm trying to, I'm not on social media as much as I would like. But I'm just trying to connect to the community as like a citizen. How can I be better helping organizers amplify their voices with the work that they're doing? So I'm connected in different ways and different ways that are to me more important than just like performing on stage. Um, I wanna ask you um, about your friend Chadwick Boseman, who we, we lost last month. Um, he was, a, he was a, a really lovely human being. I got to interview him once, and I was so impressed by his vulnerability and his humanity, aside from, of course, the, the talent and all the promise that was lost um, mm -hmm. when he died. Tell me about your friend. What, how did you guys get to know each other, and, and how will you remember him? Well, I met Chadwick through one of my good friends, uh, Lupita, and they were on location in Atlanta, Georgia. I was recording Dirty Computer, my album, and I just said I would love to host you guys. And they all showed up one night um, in the evening. We ate, we listened to music. And I just remember Chadwick that night being so present, mm -hmm. like, we were not talking about work. We were not talking about the past, but we were just right there. He was playing drums. We were dancing and him just being so kind and so loving. And I was really nervous about releasing my album. And so I had played them songs that nobody had listened to. And just like the encouragement that I got from him, seeing him smile, seeing him dance, you could feel that his spirit um, was one of wanting to give give people like the feeling of love, the feeling of hope, even at parties, you know, where we're supposed to be like drinking and, you know, just acting wild and crazy. He still took that time to tell me that he was proud, he was excited and to dance with me and make me feel like, yeah, I can release this project. So I will really miss him. Um, I feel like his spirit lives on forever through the incredible work he has done. Um, I had an opportunity to dance with him <clears throat> one last time this year, it was at an Oscars party and he tapped me on my shoulder. I'll never forget it. He tapped me and he said, let's have this dance. And we danced for a good three to four minutes, smiling. We both love James Brown. Obviously he had an opportunity for, to portray James Brown in the film. So we would like try to figure out who could out James Brown each other dancing. And I just remember that moment and I'll always hold that dear to me and I'll always try to live in the present because I saw him living in the present. I saw him do that a lot of times whenever we encountered each other. The last time we were together in 2018, you actually talked about what the movie Black Panther meant to you in that interview. What does it mean to you now in 2020? 
it's still revolutionary. It still, you know, is is Afrofuturism, us seeing ourselves in the future, thriving, uh, being able to to tell our stories from our own words and, and mouth and um, to see, you know, just that phenomenal cast coming together uh, is just it's, it's, it's iconic. Um, and I think we're all waiting for for two and and whenever Ryan, you know, can can finish it. And I think the Chadwick's uh, legacy will live on through through Black Panther. It's it's global. It's it's just like this universal, um, like, I guess, like rocket or Big Bang that just exploded. And it just let people know that being black, being a creative, we are so many things and there's really nothing that we can't do on screen. Nothing we can't do. Well, let's talk about what you're doing um, with your music. Your new song, Turntables, is out now and it's in the Stacey Abrams documentary, All In, The Fight for Democracy, which is about voter suppression. What inspires you these days to write your music? Well, honestly, I was not. (laughs) <laughs> I, I haven't really been inspired musically. Uh, it was because Stacey Abrams and the directors of, of the documentary reached out to me. I live uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, and I had an opportunity to vote for Stacey Abrams. And I was there when Brian Kemp stole the election from Stacey Abrams. You know, him being over as Secretary of State, being over the votes, overseeing it, also running against her for governor, like that's a conflict of interest. And there's already proof and data that show that. And so I just told her, whenever you need me, call me. And she did. And I watched that documentary and and just like my film Antebellum, it pulled in the past, the present and what could be our future and what's at stake for our future. Uh, if, if we don't, if we don't act in the present and become proactive and really fight this um, voter voter suppression and understand all the tactics that they're using to make sure that our voices are silenced. And so I said, you know what, if I can't pull it together for me, I'm gonna pull it together for her and the, the, the people who are fighting for marginalized voices, fighting to make sure black folks uh, don't have to stand in line uh, for, for 20 hours just to vote, like really trying to make sure that we, we own and, and take back our democracy. So I went to the studio, I had a week, and I worked with Nate Rocket Wonder, my producer. We've worked together for many years. And this is what we came up with. And, you know, it's not a song about me leading a movement or I have something to say. It's really energy. It's like energy in the form of the song because all of us are fighting and all of us will get and have been and are emotionally fatigued. This is a long fight. We don't know how much energy we're going to have to to use and so this song is just energy to the revolutionaries and i always say what is a song without a revolution and what is a revolution without a song well let's talk about your new movie antebellum um w- without giving too much away and i i, I know there's there's mm-hmm. some su- surprises here mm-hmm. tell us what it's about so i play uh veronica henley veronica henley is a very successful author she's a mother she is a wife she's a great best friend, and she's a thought leader in her community. She's a revolutionary, and Veronica finds herself trapped in this uh, horrifying reality that forces her to confront the past, the present, and the future before it's too late. Um, There are themes that are so timely and so of today. This does deal with white supremacy, it deals with systemic racism, and it deals with microaggressions. It also celebrates um, you know, black women. And globally, it gives a look at, you know, what it's like for a black woman to carry the burden of dismantling, uh, you know, systemic oppression on her back every single day and come out triumphant. Well, um, Janelle, it was great to see you again. Thank you so much for being here. It's always great seeing you. Thank you so much for having me. Antebellum is available on demand this Friday. Janelle Monet, everybody. We'll be right back with New York Times bestselling author Jacob Soberoff.